Oh yes, grade twos. Let's look at some mathematics. This work will cover the first week of the third term. Counting is important, not only in mathematics, but in real life as well. The thing about counting is when you count, you need to be accurate. You need to know that you get to the correct number. So we are going to practice a bit of counting. We are going to use these dots to practice our counting. Now, if you look at these dots, you will notice there's 10 across and there's 10 down. This makes counting easier because now we can use tens and units to count. If I give you the number 34, it means it's a 30 and a 4, if I rename it. So that tells me I've got three tens and I've got four units. So if I have to color it in on the dots now, I'm going to color in. Just a reminder about decomposing numbers. That means we're going to rename it. We're going to break it into tens and units. So if I give you the number 72, when I decompose it, it's going to give me a 70 and a 2. The next example is 41. Now if you listen to the words, it actually gives you the answer. 41. So it's a 40 and a 1. 58. I'm going to rename it as a 50 and an 8. Not only do you need to be able to read number names, you must also learn how to spell them accurately. 4 and 40 are tricky ones. If you look at them, do you notice that 40 does not have a U in it? It's a naughty 40. It kicks the U right out of the word. And 8 and 18 and 80, they are also a bit tricky. So you can practice them. Take a few numbers and write them in words and see if you are spelling them correctly. Counting on and back from a specific number. Now, if you struggle with this one, you need to use a hundredth chart. Find that number on the hundred chart and look at the numbers before it and the numbers after it for counting back and counting on. So if I look at the number 95, I can see the numbers before it will be 94 and then number 93. And if I count on from number 95, it will be 96 and 97. Here is another example, 61. Now I put 61 in specifically because it's a bit more tricky. Because if you are on 61, you have to go into the previous row back to the 50s to count back. I'm sure you can still remember how to count on a number line. The first thing you have to do when you count on a number line is look, are they counting forwards or backwards? And then you complete the missing numbers. I want you to estimate how many marbles are there. Now estimate means you must figure it out. You must think about it. It's almost like guessing. You can't just guess. That's a little bit random and you can get to a number that's not even close. Estimate means you must be close to the real number. So what I did, I counted 10 and I made a circle around those 10. Now I know about that much is 10. I want you to go and think first. How many circles like that will fit in on those marbles? And then you can estimate how many marbles there are. Once you are done estimating, go and count and see how close you were. To show tens, we usually use a long strip like this. And to show units, we show a single block like that. Now, knowing those are tens and units, look at the picture and estimate first how much it is. After you've done that, go and count and see how close you were. Now 
you need to apply what you have learned to this problem. They give me a box with sweets in it. And if I quickly have a look, it looks like there is one, two, three, four, five, six sweets in there. They tell me there are 42 sweets in the box. How many are hidden? So I can only see six. So that means the rest of them must be lying there at the bottom somewhere. Now, you need to think about it before you go and do it. If they tell me there's 42, I can only see six. That means I must figure out how many is at the bottom. That means I'm going to do a minus sum. I'm going to say 42 minus the six sweets that I can see will tell me how many is hidden. Go and look at this sum, or think about it, and then I want you to do it. What do you already know about time? You know that most analog clocks will have at least two hands. A shorter one, which shows us the hours, and a longer one that shows us the minutes. How can we remember that? The word hour is short, therefore the, the hand of the clock is short as well. The word minute is long, so that will be, it's the long hand of the clock. You know that o'clock is when the long hand is on 12, we know it is o'clock. And the short hand will be on each hour to show us what the hour will be. You also know that if the long hand is on the 6, it is half past. And when it is half past, the hour hand will be in between two hours, in the middle of two hours. It will also cut that in half. And it is half past. So we look what number is past to tell us. So if we look at the example there, the long hand is on the six, which tells me it's half past. The short hand is between the one and the two. So it's past the one. So that will mean it is half past one. In mathematics, a lot of things work together. Like for instance, fractions and time work together. If you look at the first clock, that is one whole circle. And when something is on the 12, it is on the hour, it is o'clock, because it went all the way around, covering one whole. If we look at the second picture, you can see that clock has been cut in half. And what do you notice at the bottom? That is if the hand travels from the 12 all the way to the 6. That means half an hour would have passed. That's why if the long hand is on the 6, it is half past. Now if you look at the green clock, you will see that clock has been cut into four equal parts. Can you remember what we call it when something is cut into four equal parts? We call them quarters. One quarter of that clock has been colored in. If you were the minute hand, you were standing on the 12, and you went all the way to the 3, you would have traveled a quarter of the way. That's why when the long hand is on the 3, we say it is quarter past the hour. Now, if you look on the clock on the far right hand side, you will notice the long hand is on the 3. That tell me, tells me it's quarter past. If you look at the hour hand, can you see? It just went a little bit past the 1. That will tell me it is quarter past one. When you do word problems, I would like you to remember, read carefully. Think about what's happening, what did they give me, what's going to change, and what are they asking me. How am I going to get to this answer? Then look at the numbers they give you and use that to get to the answer. Let's look at the first one. Jake has 13 marbles. He won 11 marbles in his first game. But then 
lost half of his marbles in the second game. How many marbles does he have left? There is two parts in this question. So you will have to do two sums in order to get to your final answer. Let's look at the next question. Mom shares 32 cookies equally between my sister and me. How many cookies does each get? Now, there's 32 cookies and there's two of us. And mom shares it equally. So think carefully. What type of sum are you going to do here? Mental mathematics this week. We're going to do a bit of a revision of what we've done this week. So looking at activity one, I give you the number name. You go and write the number. Activity two, it's adding and subtracting. You can use your 100 chart to do this. Don't get scared if the numbers get bigger. Just do what you would have done if it was um, just tens and units. Then at activity three, order numbers. You have to tell me the number before and the number after. Once again, don't get scared if it's bigger numbers. Look at the number. For instance, number seven. What is the number before 550? You all know what the number is before 50. So just think about that and then apply it to this answer. Activity four, circle, underline or complete. Which one is bigger? Eight times three or nine times two? You cannot just guess. You need to go and work out the answer, then decide which one is bigger. Number two, name an odd number between 78 and 81. Double 25 minus 6. Now, if you want to double 25, rename it into 20 and 5. Double the 20, double the 5, put it together again. And then don't forget, you have to minus the 6 there. Half of 64. Now, do the same as what I said in the previous one. Go and rename them into 60 and 4. Then think, what is half of 60? What is half of 4? And put those two numbers together. Number 5, order from small to big. Number 6, underline the smallest. Double 7 or half of 16. Once again, you will have to go and work it out. And then get the answer. You cannot just guess the answer. Number 7, how many tens in 43? Number 8, how many units in 113? If it's easier for you, go write the number in numbers to see what the number is. Activity 5, you're going to complete the houses to tell me what the number combinations are. Mathematics is not about numbers, equations, computations or algorithms. It is about understanding. Have an excellent day.